Budapest Gambit is what we're going to discuss now. Um, I would uh, say Budapest Gambit is not the opening you should learn for black. There are several reasons for it. Reason one, it's not up to you to get a chance to play Budapest Gambit. For instance, d4, knight f6. If d4 play player wants to avoid Budapest Gambit, they can go knight f3, second move, and you never get Budapest Gambit. This is the one reason. Second reason is the main reason, because after d4, knight f6, c4, e5, this qualifies as unsound gambit, unsound opening. There are two ways white can play. White can accept the pawn sacrifice and hold on to it, hold on to a pawn, and black is not going to have sufficient compensation. Or the second way to play for white is to um, accept the pawn sacrifice and give it back a few moves later. That's my favorite way to play against Budapest Gambit. After e5, d takes e. Again, here are two continuations. There's knight e4. Let's cover it very briefly. After knight e4, good move for white is a3, or knight f3, knight c6, followed by a3. There is never black is going to get here sufficient compensation for a pawn. But Again, that's not the main move, main continuation of Budapest Gambit. The main continuation is knight to g4. And after knight to g4, <coughs> we can go bishop at knight f3 or bishop f4. Now, bishop f4 is an interesting way to play. After knight c6, you can go knight f3 and bishop b4 check. That's the main uh, variation, the, it's the practically the only way to play Budapest Gambit for, um, for black. So knight c3 is the first way where you want to uh, stay with extra pawn and you don't want to give it back. Now after queen e7 or castle, queen e7 doesn't get the pawn back because white can play queen d5 and after castling h3 will immediately uh, immediately put uh, black in a very bad position because they have to go knight h6 and then bishop simply is going to take the knight. So the main move is, and also the other move is f6. Now this is the way that you can look up the, any opening book and they will tell you what to do. That's not my favorite way to play, and I want to always recommend the way I would like to play this opening. The way I would like to play after bishop b4 check, and this is a popular continuation, simply play knight to d2. Only disadvantage of knight d2 move is that black can get the e5 pawn back because they're going to go queen to e7, and white cannot play queen d5. So, but now what white can play is a3, attacking the bishop. Black can play knight takes e5, and now, of course, we cannot take the bishop because knight d3 is a checkmate. So what we're going to do after a3, we play knight takes a f e5, knight takes e5, and now again, knight d3 checkmate is a threat. We don't want to take knight on e5 because black is going to play bishop d2 and probably will equalize the game. So, but what we want to play is e3. And now black is forced to take white knight on d4. Now after bishop takes d2, queen takes d2, d6, bishop e2, and black castles, and so is white. This position is very, very simple. White has two bishops, and they have superior position. Uh, 
everything black was hoping for for ac for activity and get king side attack or uh, get some compensation for a pawn they don't have all white has to do to play rook f to d1 rook a to c1 and go b4 white has clear advantage here yeah. maybe not a large advantage um, they are not surely not winning but they have superior position they have clear plan of playing maybe playing for c5 and two bishops they do mean something in this position that's an easy way to play budapest against budapest gambit and again i do not recommend at all to play for white and i definitely to play for black and i definitely recommend the system I, we just looked where we give the pawn back which will guarantee you uh, a certain positional advantage and you can learn it within minutes so that will cover the budapest gambit